CPI, CPI. Are we streaming? Are we streaming? YouTube's coming up with an error. Are we live? Yeah, let me know in the comments if we're live, guys. I think we're live. We've been live for 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Good, we're live, guys. CPI, CPI February, CPI. Will Bitcoin finally break that $25,000 mark? For those who aren't familiar, this $25,000 mark is critical. And Bitcoin has worked its way up here in the lead up to CPI. This is a five minute chart we're looking at. A nice upward parallel channel here working towards 2025. This market is excited, but it doesn't want to boil over just yet. It wants to wait wait for permission from CPI and then our Fed meeting on the 22nd before it really starts to rip. But this 25k level, which has been a very difficult level for us, let's just switch up to the daily to remind ourselves how we got rejected here in August of 2022. We got rejected obviously in February a couple of weeks ago. And now very quickly, we worked our way back up to mountain attack. Now, Personally, I would like to see a little bit of cooling off before we break 25, but I understand why it's happening because this is not technical analysis. This is a fundamental shift in what's happened over the weekend in that the Fed have broke something and therefore they're going to have to be very careful. Guys, good to see you in the chat. We've got eight minutes until CPI. I'm going to go through the expectations. Let me give a hi to everybody here in the chat. If you can smash up the likes as well. Brandon, good to see you shouting out an old man. Adam, can we break 25.2k? We'll get into that shortly. Eric, hey everyone. Barney's inviting you guys to smash up the likes, which I appreciate. Pico, good to see you. Adam said shouting out 6% tech for Moo. Let's go, buddy. Good to see you again. Samuel shouting out 6.2. Marcos with the old man. Support us. Let's rock and roll. Nabil, good to see you. Shawaib. Right. So good to see so many familiar faces. Support us. Says you are live, man. Brilliant. Uh, tech for Moo. It's Golden Surfer. Good to see you. Shout out to all you guys. Lydia, so many familiar faces ready for CPI today. Let's go through the expectations. I'm going to share with you very quickly here what are we expecting and the expectation here is for the headline figure to come in at six percent okay so look out for the headline figure it needs to drop down to six percent versus where it was which was 6.4 so this 6.4 needs to drop down to six percent on the headline we then want to look at the core cpi which of course excludes food and energy we need to see that coming at 5.5 percent or less versus what we had 5.6 in the previous month then we want to look at the month on month the month on month figures are going to be very important guys because remember that's the run rate you're running at now we know inflation is high when you compare year on year over 12 month period but you want to look at the run rate that month on month inflation is where we're going to get an idea and 0.4 percent is where we're expected to come in remember 0.4 percent annualized is 4.8 percent inflation so it's still a pretty decent chunk of inflation but that's where we're expecting it to come in we do not want that higher core inflation again 0.4 we need to see that come in we can't afford to see these things higher but here's the thing and here's the interesting thing we need to understand. I spoke about yesterday the fact that the relevance on inflation has started to knock down a little bit because Jerome Powell's going to have to just play a front. But the reality is he's already broken the market. And so the market is sat here expecting that we're going to see a 25 base point rate hike. And even almost 25, 30% of the market here is saying, hang on, we might get a surprise pause in the Fed funds rate. And that could be really interesting. So that next meeting is on March the 22nd. And remember, inflation would have been a, such a bigger issue right now. But Jerome Powell stuck. Even if we get slightly bad inflation, he still can't really do 50 base points. This time last week, if we, if we projected forward and said, oh, we were going to get bad inflation, definitely we were going to get 50 basis points. But now, eh, it's got to be horrific, horrific inflation, which is unlikely. But even if we imagine, if we get a 6.3, a 6.4 even, which is still a little bit hot, um, do you think he's going to come out and do 50 base points? No, I think he'll do 25 basis points and say, let's see what's happening. But if we get low inflation, if we get inflation at 6 or 5.9, brilliant. He's got a great excuse to then say, you know what? I'm going to pause. I've already broken the banking system. Inflation showing its way down. We can crack on, okay? So we're six minutes away uh, from the decision. Let me just switch over to see if you guys can hear this. Let me know if you can hear this and if the audio is feeding through okay. Of the, of the banks last week at the foot of 21.55, I, <clears throat> I just don't think that's... That's uh, relevant. I think what is relevant is risky management practices with or without uh, 
Dodd-Frank uh, and lack of supervision by the primary regulator. The reason I ask that is because the regulator used the systemic risk exception to make depositors whole. And, Congressman, what we've acknowledged over the weekend is that basically all banks in America carry some degree of systemic risk, so should they all be regulated in the same fashion regardless of size? Well, I think tiering is important, but that gets back to... Great stuff. Okay, so now we know that that's working. Let's take a quick look here at the charts. And like we said here, this is all about fighting for that 25,000 level mark. I've made very clear how things start to become very different once we clear this $25,000 mark. For anybody who's still unsure, I want to show you this one indicator, which by the way, you can learn all these things at jars.uk forward slash TA. Uh, make sure you get involved over there. It's a free TA course. You can learn all these things. I'm not charging a single penny for it. I've put that out there because I know people are ripping you off on TA. So go and get that. Look how beautiful this chart is now. We created a bottom. We've created a high, a low with a weekly doji candle. We're ahead of our volume control, right? Where the control line is at this red line. And look how thin the volume becomes after this. Right, This gap where we drop so quickly, that's what we need to fill. So this is going to get really exciting if we can clear this level. This level which where my cursor is, we just couldn't get above that ceiling. If we can break beyond there, things can get really exciting, really explosive, really fast. Because this is the stronghold for the bears. That's where they put their trenches and their dugout and they're sitting there snipering us from there. So a good move here. A reminder that the Fed are looking to turn on the money printer again, or at the very least, slow down their rate hikes, get to a point where we're pausing. Remember, the market has gone ahead and said, you know what? Let me just refresh so we can get the latest stats here for you guys. But they've basically gone ahead and said, you know, we're going to price in cuts at the end of the year. And that's very odd because the Fed officials came out and said, we're not going to cut this year. But look how things have changed over the last three, four days with Silicon Valley Bank, with Signature Bank, with the banking system creaking at the helms. They've truly broken something. And so if they start to become our friend again, if the Fed are our friend, that is where crypto really does benefit. Right. That's where you see the dollar index start to fall. You see U.S. 10 years start to fall. And then that's where risk rotates on. I just want to remind you of that. This is the weekly chart on the dollar index. OK, this dollar index, we're nicely rejecting it now from its weekly MA ribbon. This is good. Let's now crack on. Let's push this away and send it for a for a, a longer term move to the downside. Let's send this U.S. 10 year down its weekly MA ribbon as well. That will be good for risk on. That will allow Bitcoin to start having some positive momentum here. So, so far, 2.4% up here on Bitcoin leading into the CPI. And again, we're going to need a shocking CPI, uh, in my opinion, to see this dump to the downside because the market's pretty much sitting there saying, you know what, Jerome Powell, you haven't got any ammunition to carry on doing what you want to do. You can put up a front and say you're going to keep hiking rate hikes, but you've broken the banking system. So it doesn't matter what happens with inflation. You're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Liam, good to see you, buddy. Uh, Super Tech 3000. Matt Lambo, catalyst for a fundamental shift. Uh, Nabil, good to see you. Chris, highlight Pele, good to see you guys. Uh, thank you for jumping on. Cool. So we are now two minutes away from the CPI reading. And, uh, you know, this is a big reading. This is a big reading. This is now, it's amazing how things have turned so quickly, right? We were sitting in a position where just a week ago, we could have been facing a 50 basis point rate hike at the end of this month. And that would have sent us, you know, in a very precarious predicament. We were sitting at 19,500 just days ago. Remember that. And then if we were to have 50 base points, you'll be testing the bottom line here at 18,700, worrying about levels at 17,500. This could have been very different. But now where we're sitting, if you look at it from a macro perspective, you can see here, we are starting to try and go reclaim our weekly MA ribbon. And this is going to be the key, okay? So I don't turn super, super excited until I see a weekly close at about 25.5K. That's what I want to see a weekly close at with another weekly candle opening up behind it. That's going to look exciting, okay? Guys, don't forget to smash up the likes uh, as we go into this CPI. Uh, Let's see what you guys are saying. Shout out. We've got one minute to go, guys. Drop what you think CPI is going to be. Drop what you think the headline inflation figure is going to be. Remember, we're looking for 6% here versus the 6.4 in January. Drop one number in the chat and let's see how close you guys are. And we're going to start refreshing over on their website very shortly. Keep in mind, sometimes their website crashes, but I've got my iPad here as well. So I will be refreshing to make sure we get that number as soon as possible. Sean shouting out 6.1. Horatio says, what is the outlook for the problem that major crypto banks for on-ramp are now cut out from crypto? Yeah, this is a problem. We know that the US are fully attacking. Oh, let, let me not get distracted. Let's refresh this. Let's see what we get. Still nothing. Let's refresh again. Still nothing. 
Should be getting it any moment now. CPI, CPI, CPI. Still refreshing for you guys. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. There we go. February, all consumer increased 0.4%. Okay, that's good. And rose 6% over the last 12 months. That's on target. The index for all items, less food and energy increased 0.5% in February. So a little bit hot there on the month over month, which I was a little bit worried about. We'll get into the detail shortly. But overall, it's a meet. It's not a crazy, crazy move. And let's see now how the markets are moving. Let's take a quick look here at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's taking this in a positive direction. Like we said, it was not going to, it would have had to be horrendous for us to go to the downside We've got permission to go through 25,000. Now, let's see how the traders react. Always be very careful minutes after CPI. You've got a bunch of traders. You get a big move to the upside. They then sell. Expect a little dump in the next few minutes. So always just be careful. Let it settle unless you are trading it. Then, of course, trade it. Um, but for our purposes, in terms of long term, let's just... Uh, Let's just see what plays out. S&P pre-market moving nicely. Bitcoin moving nicely. And look, inflation came in. It's coming down, right? It's coming down. Let's remind ourselves of what's going on here. This is inflation right now. It's coming down. We don't need to sit here worrying too much. And Jerome Powell certainly does not have an excuse now for continuing to be aggressive with these rate hikes. You've got a banking system that's breaking on the one side. You've just created a $25 billion backstop to protect depositors, which is another, another form of stimulation. However you want to put it, you're putting money into the economy. You can't create it out of thin air. You're putting money into the economy. You're being stimulating. Uh, okay, so let's pull up the PDF. Let's refresh this so we get the right one because they always try to mess up my cash. And let's take a look. So you can see here, 0.4%. This is good. Okay, this 0.4% is fine. That's exactly what we expected, which means we're running at an annualized rate of 4.8% inflation. That's our current run rate. Um, let's keep going here. You can see the core inflation uh, is uh, this this figure here, which is your 5.5, bang on expectation, and bang on expectation for the all items. Now, whatever you want to call it, some people call this CP lie. We Didn't we say that Joe Biden told us inflation was going to be okay? He already knew, guys. We had to have a good inflation now because the market was just going to be upset. And they can't afford an upset market right now, given the, the issues with their banking system. Uh, so inflation comes in there as we'd expect. That's good news. Uh, let's also take a look here at how the markets are moving and reacting to this news. Nice move here. Bitcoin pushing straight through, touching 25,500. Very nice move here on Bitcoin. How are you guys feeling about the CPI? Let me know in the comments. Let's switch over to see what the chaps over the suits are saying over at Bloomberg. Let's see what they're saying. It didn't help at all. It looks like also um, we did see a bit of a gain in gasoline, which was expected uh, by 1%. And... Uh, used cars which everybody watches down 2.8 percent so that's more than was thought can so, you use services you sense and goods now or do you have to look at this while we uh, grill ethan harris well i'm i'm looking to see if we have the update on that yet and uh it looks well, like we do um okay the good the the uh core uh ex housing while he's waffling guys don't forget this could now create more chances that people start pricing in a pause. Remember, we just looked at it before the CPI came out. It's sitting at about 25%. Over the rest of today, don't be surprised to see that creep up now that the inflation is coming down and the banking problem. Maybe the market's going to say, Jerome Powell, just pause. Take a pause. It's okay. Inflation's coming down. Don't wreck the banking system. We're going to be okay. The Fed futures up 30. Uh, the VIX nicely in from that 30 level to 25.55. And those individual stocks we've been following through the morning, I can click here. I believe I can click here, uh, uh, Lisa and and, and get on FRC, if I could type correctly. Yeah, you've seen an incredible rebound and throughout the morning. Pack West. Just a re rebound, uh, seeing if we're through 50 here. Well, we'll have to see. Okay, so let's jump straight back into the charts here. They're not saying too much over there on Bloomberg. Seeing nice movement here on Bitcoin. Let's just zoom out here to the five-minute chart on this view. And let's take a look at where we're sitting realistically here. So you can see exactly what was happening. We, we spoke about this before the CPR reading. Nice parallel channel. Now you want to look for a breakout. Now, here's the crazy thing. A bit of technical analysis will say, let's just be conservative and take this swing here, right? If you were just to take that swing there and you were to apply that to the point of breakout, this kind of gets you moving on the way toward 27.6. 27 I know that sounds crazy, but that's actually a conservative technical analysis price target. Right. So we'll leave that there so you guys can laugh at me. But I'm just I put these here as scaffolding, right, to give me a framework for where we could be heading. So let's see how that plays out here now over the next day or two. Let's look at the pre-market here on the US. 
and see how their early signs are reacting to this CPI data. NASDAQ moving up slightly here, S&P up a percent, and the Dow Jones picking up 0.8% as well. Look, this is good news. Inflation is coming down, right? We've got to take the good news when we have it. We always complain when there's bad news. When there's good news, let's, let's embrace it, right? This is positive. CPI is coming down. Jerome Powell needs to, he's going to have pressure now from the big boys, not us, not us little investors who are saying, oh, Jerome Powell, go pause. No, the big banks are knocking on these saying, we're in trouble, right? Are you going to backstop all the other banks who need 25 billion each as well? And plus more than that, right? <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to pause? Vicky said here, just in time, thanks for the stream. You're welcome. Demir was shouting out six, good prediction. All you guys were pretty much bang on the money. Pretty much everybody called this at six, right? Even when we were looking at it, I tweeted a couple of days ago, these were the expectations from the major banks with the median sitting at six. This one was telegraphed. This was an easy CPI. The market knew. Joe Biden probably fixed it as well, just to make sure we come in exactly at the expectation, how convenient. And uh, we got that right. And we can, we can put that behind us now and look towards the PPI inflation, which comes out later this week. I think that's tomorrow. And then we've got our... FOMC meeting on March the 22nd. Very important. March the 22nd. If you're not following me on Twitter, at reallyjazz1, check out the link in the description to Binance as well. I managed to headlock them when I was at their London HQ to give you guys a good offer. You know Binance don't offer good offers uh, for uh, influencers, but I've got you guys an offer. You just make a small trade of $10. They're going to give you $100 straight away. So go claim your free money. What have you got to lose? Even if you don't use that account, at least you've claimed your free 100 USDT. Right, getting a little bit of calling off here now. Of course, the traders playing their games, like I warned. Uh, now we just want to see, can we, over the rest of today, really consolidate above 25k and have a meaningful break? I don't just want a little weak break. I want to zoom out to the 4-hourly, and I really want to see good volume breaking through this level, right? That's what I want. I want good volume coming through. I don't want none of this weak volume candles. I want something like this, a nice big volume candle today coming through, pushing through this level and saying, you know what, we're done with 25K. We're going towards 26K. And we're doing that with conviction and purpose. That's what we need from this market right now. Uh, let's refresh here on the Fed rate monitor tool to see if any pricing has been changed just yet. And uh, still sitting pretty much where we are. Market's expecting 25 basis point. Let's see what you guys are saying. Halim is saying, asking you guys to smash up the likes, which I completely agree with. Smash up those likes. Sean is happy. Matt Lambo says, good CPI. Shoeb says, congratulations, the bull run begins. Guys, it feels more and more like that. You guys know I'm not sensationalist. You know I don't get excited without, the, without reason. But zooming out from technicals, if I said from a technical perspective, what makes me excited? It's breaking this weekly EMA ribbon and getting above that, right? We're, we're, at, we're there now. We just need to close. And the week, this weekly candle closes in five days, right, on Sunday. So that's one thing from a technical perspective. But the other thing from a fundamental perspective is when does the Fed pivot, right? When does the Fed pivot? When, does, when do they go from being your friend, uh, sorry, from not being your friend to being your friend? When do they go from tightening to accommodating? And it looks like we're on the precipice of that happening right now. Now, the markets will jump ahead and price that in. OK, so don't expect to get to the FOMC meeting and be able to trade that on that day. No, they're going to price it in now. If they think that the Fed is going to go to 25 base points or pause, they're going to decide that between now and March the 22nd. So expect volatility between now and March the 22nd. Right. After March the 22nd, it'll be priced in unless we get a shocker. Then markets will react to the shocker. But it's going to try to price in what they reasonably expect now. Ian, just jumping on, we've met CPI. We hit 6% on the CPI inflation. 0.4% on the month on month, uh, as you can see here. So we can take a look here at this. 0.4% as expected and our 6% as expected core inflation as well coming in. If we take a look at, uh, let's see if trading economics have pulled that up just yet. Core inflation rate. There you go. That's your 5.5% core, which is brilliant. And let's see if we can pull up the month on month core as well. Let's see if we can find that core. I don't think they have it on here, actually. OK, cool. So that's it. We'll just take a look at that. We've met. We've met CPI and we can move on. Uh, Horatio says copper as a forward leading indicator for inflation is rising again and looks like it's breaking up to the upside. What is your assessment for this? No, no real thoughts. I don't, I'm not a big commodities guy. Uh, but yeah, look, we know that gold was moving as well slightly. Bitcoin just moves at a crazy rate. So when you look at these traditional inflation hedges like copper, like gold, fine, but they're not as exciting as Bitcoin. Bitcoin's got this duality where it can act like a tech stock, but at the same time, it acts as an inflation hedge as well. And that just creates crazy dynamics. But one thing we know for sure is that Bitcoin is a liquidity driven asset. When liquidity is high in economy, Bitcoin does well. That is why this pivot is so crucial more than any other piece of data, more than inflation. Inflation could drop down to 2% today, and I don't think it's going to have a, as huge effect as the pivot. 
right? Because the only reason we cared about inflation was because that's going to tell us what the Fed is going to do. Why were we monitoring inflation? Because it's going to tell us when is the Fed going to stop raising interest rates. When there's excess liquidity in the market, we've seen that Bitcoin tends to do well. That's historically what we've always seen. Let's see now Bitcoin's moving 3.7% on the day. I do want to check in to see how is the dollar index faring. Also slightly green here today, just 0.8, call it flat. US 10-year rising slightly again here, trying to get to a percent on the day. That's odd. Uh, again, normally you expect them to be uh, the in inversely correlated. Sean shouting out that Phantom is looking good. Yeah, all coins are moving nicely as well. Uh, Phantom moving up 6%. You've got Ethereum moving less than Bitcoin, which is interesting. Let me just put this onto the daily chart. Do, 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 do. There you go. So you've got Phantom now trying to reclaim its daily EMA ribbon, which is good news. You've got Avalanche moving up 0.8, not as not as much as Phantom at all. Uh, Cardano moving up 1%. Not many huge movers. But again, remember the clue that I always give you guys. Look at what is moving, right? This is this is a brave new liquid index for Bitcoin. Big move here. Let's take a look at gold. Uh, gold just kind of chilling here on the CFD market. What else is moving today? Yeah, not too not too much moving. Got some couple of small old coins. Still some of the Chinese plays. Still got a bit of uh, momentum in it. But it's Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin led. Bitcoin dominance up again, breaking uh, nicely here on a one point seven eight percent day today. And it's Bitcoin led. Let the money flow into Bitcoin. Eventually, it will come into old coins. But one thing we know is people are losing trust in banking. You imagine you were just sat there in a bank. You were sat there in a bank with your life savings. I know there were tech founders who have had ten, twenty million dollar exits who left their money in Silicon Valley Bank. Now, for the, those two nights, imagine the sleepless nights they had before the, before the Fed decided to backstop them. Horrific. So if, you know, yes, they backstop them, but surely that's going to make people lose trust in the banking system to even have had the question that maybe they weren't going to get their money back. Their whole life savings, not going to get back. They worked all their life to build this business, exit. You put 20 million in the bank, you think you're safe. And there you go. It's wiped out overnight, right? So what's the answer to that? Crypto. Crypto is the answer to that. Right. You can have your you can have your debates about whether you care about altcoins. I've always said altcoins are like startups. Right. You you can risk it. You can get crazy returns. Fine. But Bitcoin is that proven asset. Right. So if people say oh, they don't believe in Bitcoin, that's the bit they need to study. That's truly immutable, truly decentralized, proven. And uh, that's why we're seeing Bitcoin running right now. Robert Powell says, smash the likes, guys, just like me. Pele says, sell copper by silver. Horatio, thanks for your answer and all your content you're putting out. A lot to learn from you. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. I'm just sharing my research. I don't claim to know it all whatsoever. I'm here learning like you guys every day, and I just put on a video so you guys can watch with me as well. Let's have a quick switch over to see if the suits are saying anything. Today with news from around the world. With the first word, I'm Lisa Mateo. Emmanuel Macron faces parliamentary brinkmanship and protest. Right, they're bored of CPI. They've switched straight over to politics again. And there we go. What we'll do is we'll monitor this here. I'm going to do a summary video so you guys know what's happened if you've missed any of this as well. But look, it's good news. You can see fear and greed index has jumped straight back up here to 56. And it's no surprise, right? Bitcoin, the, the, the landscape for Bitcoin has fundamentally shifted. If you look at where we were last year, we were in a very painful position. Inflation out of control, Russia, Ukraine. 50, you know, 75 basis point rate hikes in a row with the market, even at one point pricing it, we could be seeing 100 basis points. Now we're in a position where we're seeing Bitcoin trying to break through 25, well, it's through 25,000 now, but I want to see it hold above it with volume candles. For me, this doesn't give me confidence yet. Maybe I've got PTSD, but I want to see it like kind of get up to here, 26. And then even if it comes back down to retest on the backside, let me just show you what that means. So what I want to see, and again, excuse the really messy chart, but it's the only way I can keep sense of things. So this is that this is the level where we got rejected, right? 25, where my cursor is. So I want to see us break above it, retest here, and then go back up here. Then I'll be comfortable, right? Like, of course. But I do want to see us have a little bit more good volume today, break through this level, hold back, and then off we go to the moon, right? Then things can get really exciting. Cool. Thanks for joining me on the live stream today. I will be doing a summary video and updating you on whatever else is going on in the market. Don't forget to check out Ijazda UK forward slash TA. If you want to learn TA, it's still not too late, guys. Don't be that person that waits until the bull market and then you're sitting there not having the skills you needed. You've had plenty of time here in this bear market to pick up the skills. And it's going to take you just hours learning through my TA course. You can keep it open as an encyclopedia and just work through it. Head and shoulders pattern. Or, I mean, in fact, why not just, before I jump off, guys, there is a huge head and shoulders pattern here, which people aren't talking about, right? Let me just get this up on the weekly. Let me just find a clean chart. Uh, I don't have a clean chart because that's what TA guys do. We never have clean charts. Let me just remove this. This is a big head and shoulders pattern on the weekly. Okay. This is your left shoulder. 
this is your right, uh, this is your head, and this is your right shoulder. I'll, in a future video, I will tidy this up for you, and I'll draw it on so you guys can see it. But this is a big reversal pattern, and this could be the reversal pattern which has been formulating ever since we fell here on June the 22nd, creating our reversal out of this bear market. And that ties in with the fundamentals that we're seeing as well. Cool. Thanks for jumping on, guys. Don't forget to smash up the likes on your way out. Check out Binance if you're looking to set up an exchange and take $100 for free.